Alright, uh, welcome back to Comic Book Wednesdays, a weekly series where we discuss comic books. We're your hosts, I'm Ian. I'm Al. And I'm Shane. And we're back here. Shane, why don't you tell our listeners what we've been listening to? Sounds good. We are reading Transformers Till All Are One, and today we are going over books uh, 4, 5, and 6. Awesome. So, um... It's been uh, two weeks since we last did an episode, so why don't you give us a quick recap, Shane? Sure. So in Till All Are One, we have the main the main story is focusing on a Decepticon Starscream and Autobot Windblade. This is post Cybertron. They're trying to find a way to make the government work. Starscream is in an elected office right now. So he has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, and everyone's trying to see what he does with this power. And Windblade, being the person that she is, he does seem to have some dirt on her and is kind of manipulating her into helping him, but in a weird way, she wants to help him for the betterment of Cybertron. And we also had to deal with the uh, Combiners, parts of the uh, Decepticon Bruticus and one of their dead companions. Right. And it's kind of like they were looking for their dead companion's body. Um, I imagine because they can't combine to make their... I'm going to use the word Titan. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Uh, So they can't combine to make their Titan uh, without him. But his body is, for lack of a better word, dead. So... Where well, it was more dead. his mind was dead, right? He was brain dead? Right. He was still body. living, but his... They had him hooked up to machines. Uh, ah, okay. At least that's how I was interpreting it. I mean, you... I could be wrong, Shane. No, that's that's honestly correct. He is, um... He is kind of brain dead. Like, he was completely destroyed... Like, almost completely destroyed in the battle. It was Wheeljack and another... Autobot that found him, or like an auto Decepticon, a rat trap, I believe, and they were patching him up, trying to get him into working order, but they could not get his spark. Like, they couldn't basically bring his soul back into his body. So, for lack of a better term, he's just brain dead, living on life support. Okay. So, then I guess where issue four picks up is. The combiners are trying to combine with his brain dead, their brain dead partner, and that doesn't seem to work too well for them. No, <laughs> that was so incredibly dark. Um, one of the reasons I really liked it is because you have them all like fusing together with him, and they're you can see their little like conversations because they have to, you know, they're a combiner, they're a titan, they have to agree on what they're doing, and then you have the brain dead one who's like only able to say like one or two sentences in this like really manic state like i just thought that was really you know kind of crazy good writing yeah it was uh, i thought that was pretty interesting how they did that i like like how they the imagery showed him you know just like having the the drool coming out of his mouth and you know not really interacting with anything because of his brain dead and you know I, I just thought it was pretty cool how they did that right it's like what what would you hear if you like could read the mind of a brain dead person like and i feel like that's what they tried to express with that and it, it, it was kind of really unsettling Yeah, no, it was... And then, like, going into that whole fight with... You know, there was one scene that I took a picture of where, like, you know, Windblade and the Starscream are talking, and he's just like, no, like, we need to stop this combiner, we need to, like, you know, get this under control. And she's basically like, you know, look at what's happening, and she just stands there kind of defeated, like, oh my god, like, what the fuck do we even do? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, oh, and I really liked that aspect of it. And then it, like the whole like uh, brain dead combiner and all that. Like I liked 
that issue where you kind of see them together. Ooh. And then next thing you know, like, they... Do they kill all the combiners? Like, it was hard for me to understand what was exactly was happening there as far as the end of that. No, you're all good. Basically, they did enough... Um... They did enough damage to where, like, yeah, all of them, for lack of a better term, they're they're dead. Like, and so you had Chromia, I believe it was Chromia, the blue one, who was running up, being like, "No, why? Why were you guys going after Starscream? Like, what is the dirt that you have on Starscream? Right. Because Starscream is blackmailing Windblade, and Chromia Windblade. was trying to help her. So you had that like kind of subplot happening. And Chromia is like Windblade's assistant, right? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Ironhide freaking kills the whole uh, thing. Yeah. Who just got blasted into the lava? Is that one of us? Um. Yeah, no, I think we're all fine. But yeah, no, Ironhide kind of just does that, and that was kind of an awkward thing of like. He's trying to just do his job as, like, the, the police Security guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he's doing a good job, too. I mean, like... But... Yeah, what can you do? Like, you... Uh, uh, you want to get information. You don't want to kill them. But at the same time, these guys are... They're, they're a titan. Like, you need to act quick. Sometimes you have to act before you ask questions. You know? And, mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Ironhide made a uh, rough call. But, uh, you know, I was kind of surprised, though. I mean, I kind of thought that Onslaught was going to have this larger role going forward. And, like, with him, like, for uh, dead, or lack of a better word, like, it's like, well, where do we go now? Uh, who's our villain? Um, and maybe we get that answer in the next issue shane do you think we we get like i'm i'm hoping that we get kind of an answer because like from what i remember it explains uh, you know the story goes into a little bit why onslaught was you know kind of doing what he was doing um and like you you're absolutely right like they did wrap up that like whole like oh here's this murder mystery plot that we're all really liking and it just kind of abruptly just ends Right, and I feel like I didn't get an answer to, like, who did it. So it's like, well, where is this going? Yeah. And, like, in the next in the next set of issues, like, there's, there's definitely more things to get into. And, like, that leading into issue, like, into issue five of, like, how it just starts to be really confusing. Because you got a little bit more of that, like, political nonsense going on. But then that leads into the 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 dead titans coming in from space which was you know as we've kind of talked about like on our own that was that felt really really rushed it did um al are you feeling the same way about that like yeah no it definitely like it was just kind of like out of nowhere they're like oh yeah dead titans yeah and then the um there's a female, female Transformer in space piloting Shane, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. It's like a, it's a, a, a Titan. One. Aelita One, that's her name? Yeah, she's the one piloting it. She doesn't like Starscream. And I, I know from my my limited Transformers knowledge, a lot of people don't like Starscream. Starscream. I mean, he, he's kind of a doucher, right? Yeah. Well, I don't think... Like, what, what we talked about before, I don't think it was so much that she didn't like Starscream. There was a reason she didn't want uh, Carcer pulled out of... or... P to transform, right? Yeah, and that, like, that just doesn't get, like, explained very well. Um, like, so... To give you a little bit of backstory that might help, I lead a one was Optimus Prime's love interest. And her name used to be Ariel. 
Megatron and before, you know, Optimus was Optimus, you know, he was under the name Orion Pax. Now Megatron killed them both. Like it caused something to kill them both. They got rebuilt. She got rebuilt as Ilita One. He got rebuilt as Optimus Prime. Um, so like they've been at war. Like she's seen all of his like cruelness, depravity, all of that. So instantly she's like, I don't give a shit who's the leader of Cybertron. You can kiss my ass. I'm not helping you. And so I, I understand her motivation there, but it doesn't explain why Carcer can't transform. And like, as the issues progress, it gets to it later on. Oh, it does. But okay. Yeah, like it does explain it eventually, but just not right away, which does make it kind of confusing. That's fair. For like somebody who's not completely familiar with who that is and what's going on, it's gonna take a little time for it to make sense. Yeah, uh, which is fine. I think that's a common story uh, storytelling uh, quality. You know, like authors give you some information and then they leave you in suspense. You know, uh, it's common. Uh, I don't know. It just felt like. A lot of change happened between issues four and five, where I'm like, this, the whole, I want to say, like, pace of the book changed completely. Because you go from this mm -hmm. murder mystery, uh, a lot of political uh, debate, and then it goes to, like, there are zombie titans that are fighting. And it's it's very fast paced. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I, I do like the pacing. It's just wow, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. It's not right. It's not right. Um, I do want to see where it's going because I feel like we're gonna get something, but we don't have a lot of issues left. Well, we're like halfway through it at this point, right? Yeah. So things gotta really pick up. And next three issues i think do they explain the, later why the dead titan showed up or is that just kind of like hey we're here yeah no they they do get into that reasoning um what i can say right now without like super spoilers is there was an entire like comic series before this called the combiner wars and it was about like people who were um you know the titans and their role on cybertron and everyone trying to like make friends with all these different ones and trying to combine different bots to become titans and like it it was just a, it was a, an entire story about a power grab more or less everyone gotcha. was trying to figure out how to combine with other things and like some transformers could and some couldn't and so some of them resulted in like mind controlling titans and like doing other things and like it was it was a really weird story but it was good lore but that happened right before this in relative time frame so like i can see why they're referencing it but the first time that i read this i had to go back because i was like what the fuck where is this coming from right this just kind of like came out of nowhere and like from as a writer i know that like okay you're trying to give a crisis for windblade and starscream to see how they handle this but they could have given you a little backstory <laughs> They could have given you a little backstory, and they could have, like, done more with the murder mystery, because I feel like if they kept that theme, that would have been cool. I feel like that's a great way to, like, test uh, a new political leader, is unrest. Have your people be afraid. Have them fight your, uh, your police, your law enforcement, because they don't trust them, because people are dying left and right. You know, and... And it kind of felt like maybe there was they were singling out one type of uh, or one faction or another. That like really puts a lot of strain on a leader because how do you then unite your people when you're already a sh uh, uh, what's the word uh, you're already an untrustworthy party? You know what I mean? Like yeah, you're not really in the public eye in a good light. That's kind of where I was thinking. No, I, I completely agree with you because, like, I, I liked that, you know, we had that little bit of a conversation between Windblade and Starscream of, 
and, and there's one other thing I wanted to talk about that I thought was cool. Like when Blade and the Star Scream, where she was like, you know, trying to, he has dirt on her, therefore she's like kind of forced to, forced to help. But then also she wants to help. And now that Chromia kind of like took the fall for her being a little sneaky, she now has a little bit more freedom to like investigate him. Um, yeah. No, I only have one final thought on it, but Alan was curious. Like, what did you, what did you think of the ending towards that? Well, I'm interested to see where they do go from here because, like, at the end of that issue, it was very like, you know, we're gonna have some issues real quick right here, you know. So it, I'm excited to see where it goes. Good. Yeah, I, I am too. Uh, I'm liking the book. Um, I'm really curious to see like how it ends up for Starscream. I, I mm. kind of want him to be a good leader, you know? I, I don't know if he will get to that point, but... I would like to see him succeed, you know, but it's Starscream, so... Yeah, I can't I mean, expect them not to. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, we just went from reading a Spider-Man book where we ended up rooting for Dr. Octopus. So it's like, are we going to do Transformers while we're rooting for Starscream? That'd be kind of fun. Kind of like that idea. You know, but again, I'm, I'm... at the same point, it's Starscream. <laughs> I don't want to root for him. <laughs> All yeah. I'm going to say is there is absolutely a reason that I picked this issue, and I'm really looking forward to you guys getting to that scene. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Uh, is that is that next week or the week following, do you think? Um, so because this is kind of a shorter one, so next week we have that's four, five, six, 7, 8, 9. Uh -huh. um, 10, 11, and 12 starts to wrap it up. And that annual one that we read at the end after 10 and 11 and 12 is when the like the scene that I'm talking about kind of hits. So we still have a few weeks to get there, but it does wrap it up really, really nicely. Okay. Okay. I'm into it. Um, I don't know. I kind of touched on anything, everything. Al, do you have any final thoughts? No, I think we're good. Shane? Um, this is, uh, I have... Issue. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, this is your, uh, your pick, so uh, I'll leave it to you. Um, I have one final thought, and that's just, I don't know if you guys noticed, but whenever Windblade is talking to Metroplex, how he calls her Wind Voice, did you guys pick up on that? I did see I that. did. What okay. is that about? So he, Metroplex, like I was telling you a little bit ago, is a very quiet kind of Autobot. Like, he he wants to be left the fuck alone. He doesn't want to fight. He just... But he will He will if he has to. Like, in this issue, when he was summoned for, like, the Titans, and Windblade was like, hey, can you help? And he was like, yeah, I got you. Um, you know, paraphrasing. The reason that he calls her Wind Voice is because she is currently the acting... He sees her as the acting authority on Cybertron that can act as the voice of the planet. He like sees a lot of good in her so that he just calls her wind voice as not only like, th like this high figure that he like kind of holds honor to, but also as like kind of a joke that he's the only one that that's the only person that he'll talk to. So he just refers to her as wind voice as like a cute way of being like, I like your voice. I don't like anybody else. I'll talk to you. Uh, <laughs> okay, I like That's that. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't pick up on that entirely, but uh, I noticed that he was saying it. it just looks like okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm curious now. I'm starting to think like, well, maybe, uh, me, maybe she's gonna take Star uh, Starscream's job. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, never know. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think that's it for us this week. Um, uh, yeah, uh, tune in next time uh, where we continue Transformers to all is one.
Good night, everybody. Yeah. Night, y'all. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.